Hi, my name is Carson Stringer. I'm a group leader at HHMI Genelia Research Campus. I'm gonna tell you about Subpost 2.0, how to train your own cellular segmentation model. And this is joint work with Marius Park Dutsaryu, who's also a group leader at Genelia. And so you might wanna segment cells for a variety of reasons. For instance, if you're counting cells um, or if you're monitoring cell shape changes, if you're quantifying gene expression, such as in in situ RNA sequencing, you need to have precise boundaries between cells or if you're, for instance, recording neural activity, you need. So we created CellPose as an algorithm that could potentially work across a variety of data sets. And this, this CellPose 1.0, this generalist algorithm worked well uh, because we compiled a large and varied training data set with 70,000 annotated ROIs. So here's, an exa here's examples of test images in our data set. We also created an auxiliary representation of these cellular ROIs. So the network takes as input an image like this, and it's trained to predict these flow representations of each cell, where there, each pixel is, uh, has a vector which points towards the center of the cell that it's in. And so the, the network predicts these flows, we run dynamics on these flows, and, and ultimately we get out the, the masks for, or the ROIs for each cell. And so if we apply cell pose across our, our test images, uh, the ground truth is in yellow and the predictions are in red, you can see that cell pose can segment a variety of different images. Can we really achieve the, the best generalist model with more data? Um, maybe, maybe not, because actually segmentation styles can vary depending on the data set. So in cell pose, we have these images where we often we segment cell only cells that have cytoplasm, not just nuclei. We also have examples of images where we didn't circle processes, particularly if, if they were very long or if they were ambiguous. Um, and we also uh, really tried to segment as much of the cytoplasm as possible, even in maybe ambiguous cases. Uh, but other biologists might have other needs. Um, and in fact, the biologists um, and computer scientists who assembled the TissueNet data set, uh, which is a really nice big, big open data set, uh, they, they circled all of the nuclei, um, even if they didn't have cytoplasm. They often circled uh, the cells, uh, not always including all of the cytoplasm, uh, particularly maybe when it was more ambiguous, like, like here. And so these are different segmentation styles compared to the cell post segmentation style. We look at um, another, the live cell data set. Uh, they, this is another big data set that recently came out. Um, the biologists and annotators, they didn't segment these regions, which were very dense, where the boundaries were ambiguous, but they were very careful to segment the processes of these cells um, very precisely. And so we sort of have a problem. A single model cannot segment images in different ways. You can't have the same model um, segment nuclei uh, or not segment nuclei, depending on, on which one you if, you, if you have both use cases in your, in your training data. Um, so uh, what's the solution? Perhaps it's that every biologist needs to have lots of annotations and train their own model on lots and lots of hours worth of annotations. Um, but we found that this is, this is not actually the solution, that if you start with a good pre-trained model, you don't need a lot of data to perform um, at state-of-the-art performance. And so if we take, for instance, an image from the tissue net data set from the breast vectra class, and we run the cell pose pre-trained model, uh, the cell pose 1.0 in a sense model on it, we get an accuracy of 0.36. And if we, but if we start adding uh, more training ROIs around 400, our accuracy goes up to 0.68. We add more, the accuracy goes up to 0.76. You can see it's, it's segmenting all of these nuclei. It's learned this new bias from, from the tissue net data set. And it basically saturates after a, a few thousand ROIs. Um, and we can summarize this. So here's a curve of the accuracy versus the number of training ROIs that the model has. And so this is the, the solid curve is the curve that's starting from the pre-trained cell pose model. The dashed curve is from scratch. And so you can see that starting from the cell pose model performs better than starting from scratch. 
And also after even just a thousand ROIs, we're performing better than the, the Mesmer model, which was trained on all of the, um, in some cases, 100,000 ROIs uh, from a given class. And, and so if we look at um, the other data set, the large data set, uh, LiveSell, we see a similar trend where as we increase the number of training ROIs, we also get a saturation in performance. And so this solid curve again is starting from pre-trained, it goes up very quickly and then starts to saturate. Um, and there's a, there's a big difference here in particular of using the pre-trained model versus training from scratch. And so we thought, okay, maybe you can you can label a uh, thousand or two thousand ROIs, but can we label even fewer ROIs um, if we use a human in the loop online method? And so the way this works is we we take uh, a new image and we run CellPose 1.0 on it, our pre-trained model. Um, we correct the segmentation, the automated segmentation that comes out of that model. We add this to our training set and we retrain our model. And then we apply this new model to our to the next image in the in the training set, and then we correct it, and so on. And we go we go in this loop where we're always correcting segmentation from a model that's that's constantly improving. So ideally, you're doing less and less work each time. And so here's an example of of how this works in practice, where you're you're starting with an image, you've you've run cell pose on it, and you have to label manually 82 out of the 113 ROIs. You train, uh, you train the model on this corrected image, and then on the next image, you only have to label 32 out of 174 ROIs. And again, as you keep doing this iterative process, you're only labeling tens of ROIs per image rather than hundreds. And, and so basically uh, what we found was that a, an online human in the loop model with 167 manual ROIs uh, can perform just as well as a model that that's trained not in the loop or offline uh, with 663 ROIs. And that basically we also found that that in both cases, um, the online and offline performance is better than starting from a model from scratch. And so if we go up to, for instance, five images, we're already at kind of this within human agreement, which is kind of the best that we can do where the same person has labeled the same image twice which is kind of the, the best performance we can get. And so the, the blue curve is online cell po uh, online starting with the cell post pre-trained model, and the orange curve is offline starting with the cell post pre-trained model. And you can see that they're very similar, um, but again, we used far fewer ROIs in the human in the loop case. And so this is all implemented in the, in the cell pose GUI so that a user can run the model, the cell pose, uh, pre-trained model in the GUI and then correct the segmentation as is being done here. And after the segmentation is corrected, you can see that um, we're going to train the model from the GUI again. We just opened up this window. We'll use the default parameters. It's training on one image and now we're starting to train. And this training goes pretty quickly if you have a GPU. And so this is this is applied to the next image already. It looks pretty good. And after five images, um, we can add these images again to the to the training set after after correcting them. Again, train the model. And the performance looks very good on, on an image, on a new image. And you can drag in another new image that the model hasn't seen and run your new model again in the GUI. And again, the performance looks very good. So in summary, um, there are various segmentation styles that biologists use. And so we, in cell pose, we've created a model zoo that you, a, a variety of pre-trained models that you can choose from to, to start um, your annotations.
And so, and, and what we found was that segmentation models don't need lots of data to work well, as long as you have good pre-trained models and, and hopefully um, using these cell post pre-trained models, um, you're at a good starting place. Uh, we found that training models can, can be even faster if you use human in the loop training. Uh, and in the, the future, we're thinking about maybe hosting uh, new user model, 